Welcome to the channel guys! Today I'm going to show you how to turn your picture into comic book art. And just a quick reminder, if you want to see more of my videos, please smash the like button and follow me on social medias. But now, let's get into it! So the first thing you want to do is get a reference. Get a picture that you want to use. If you're using a picture of somebody else, make sure to get permission to use it for your own artworks. The first step I'm doing here is making rough outlines of the pose. As you can see, I don't follow the original pose exactly. I overextend the legs a little bit to give it more of a cartoony style. And I change the hair quite a bit. And I add in a really foreshortened hand to give a lot of dimension to this picture. After I was finished with my rough outlines, I created a new layer and started doing another sketch, but this time I went into much more detail. As you can see, I'm adding the first details to the helmet and I'm going over the hair and changing it quite a bit from the first original sketch that I did. As you go through this process, you can just add and erase as much as you want is the good thing when you're just doing sketches you don't have to worry about making mistakes just go over it until you feel that you're getting it right as you can see here I'm also quite struggling a bit to find the right shape for her shirt I couldn't decide on how to design the wrinkles it took me quite some time until I found the shape that I wanted to go with next I went over the legs again the shape is almost the same like in the first sketch, just add a little bit more detail here and there. Then I decided to go for a skirt instead of jeans that she wears in the original. After that I went over the shoes, no clear design here yet, but we will get into much more detail a little bit later. The important thing to remember is try to get your sketch right. Get your pose right and find a design for your outfit because a little bit later once you have your details outlined and probably even your color on, it might be hard to change certain things. As you can see I'm still going over the wrinkles of her skirt and kind of struggling a bit there but I really feel that I want to get it right before I go into the details and before I put the ink on. Because again, all the changes you're making now are easy to make and easy to redo. And from that point on, I rarely use the reference. Just when I want to go back and take a look at the pose and see if I got it right. Next thing I do is I reduce the opacity of the layer and create a new layer for the more detailed outlines. So what we're doing now is going over the whole piece again for the third time now with our inking brush and we're going to add in all the beautiful details. Just make sure you're doing this on a new layer again so you're not interfering with your old sketch and it will be much easier to put the color in once we're finished with the outlines. So we got the helmet and the hand done, now we're going over the hair and we really want to give it a dynamic look like it's flowing in the air while our character is riding her skateboard down the hill and we're going over our shirt next adding all the details and we're pretty much just following the sketch that we did before maybe just doing a few tweaks here and there and adding some details that we're gonna need for our final picture. And as you can see I'm pretty much not working with the reference here anymore. But that's the cool thing about digital art. I really wanted that reference for its cool pose and work with it. But after that I really did my own thing. Especially with the design of the costume as you can see here and also with the colors, what you will see later on. And 
and we're getting closer to finishing off our outlines. You can go as thick or as thin as you want. It just depends on the style that you're looking for. Here I'm using a thin but clear outline and that's mostly the style that I'm using for almost all of my pictures. Here I'm adding in some details to the shoes and finishing off my outlines with the skateboard. All of this is still happening on the same layer. I like to keep my outlines on the same layer. As long as you're not doing any animations, it's probably fine to do it that way. So here we're pretty much done with the outlines. What I'm doing here is just refining it a little bit further and just correcting a few mistakes and adding some thickness to some of the lines just to add some separation within the areas of the picture. And we're in the middle of our finishing touches for our outlines. The next step is going to be to add color to our picture. For that we will add separate layers for different parts of the body. So we will have a layer for our skin, a layer for our hair, for our helmet, for our shirt, skirt, shoes and eventually one for our board. The way how I do this is by choosing the magic wand tool. Then I pick the outlines layer and I mark, for example, all of the skin in the picture. And once I have it all selected, I like to go to Select, Modify and expand the whole selection to one or two pixels. So I get all the edges covered. And with all that selected, create a new layer and fill it in with some color. I usually use different types of grey for the whole picture for a start before I put on the real color. It kind of helps me to see how many different layers and areas we're covering here. And once we're finished with that, we're creating layer masks for all of those previously created layers. And that will help us when we start putting in the primary colors for our picture because we don't have to worry about going over the edges anymore. As you can see we, we're pretty much done with our primary colors here trying to find the right color tones for all the areas and we're also starting to add some texture and some blur effect to the background to make it look like our character is in motion also starting to add a border to our frame putting in a design for our skateboard. Here I'm just refining the line work a little bit, correcting a few little mistakes that I've made and I'm starting to put in some color on our board. I'm 
getting into the shoes now. Fun thing, I'm, I'm really struggling to find the right colors for the shoes here. The cool thing is you can just go with whatever you want, you don't have to follow any reference. Just pick your favorite colors that you like or favorite designs that you're looking for. Just go with it. So we got our primary colors done for the whole picture and we're starting to add new layers. These layers also have to be converted into clipping masks so you don't have to worry again about going over the edges. On these layers we're going to add shadows and highlights to our picture. That will really give us some dimension. Try to imagine where the sun could be coming from and where you want to add these highlights and shadows. That can really make a big difference in the final look of the picture. And really remember to put these highlights and shadows for all these different parts of the body on separate layers. Because if you do it that way, you can easily make changes and correction anytime and you don't have to worry messing up anything that you have already created. Okay, so we just finished doing the shadows and the highlights for the skin and we're going over the same thing, same procedure with all of the other parts. Now in this case we're doing the shirt, again new layers separately for the highlights and for the shadows. And as you can see I'm doing quite a bit of correcting and changing and I don't really have to worry about messing up anything that I've created before. to do when I draw shadows or highlights is mostly I use a different tone of the same color like for example here when I'm drawing this shirt or the skirt for the highlights I would use a much brighter tone of the same color and for the shadows I would use a darker tone of the same color I feel like that gives a pretty nice effect and not just makes it black or white Except you're looking for some really, really dark shadows or some really bright highlights, then of course you can go with just black or white. So I'm getting into one of the trickiest parts of the picture. For me, one of the most difficult things to draw are mostly the hair. I mean, because you don't really want to draw every single hair, right? And that's not the style we're going for. We're going for some cartoon anime style here. And I try to recreate that. So I'm drawing in the shadows and the highlights here as well. In that typical case, I use white as my highlight because I really want it to make it pop out. And because the hair, I choose a yellow color for the hair, 
I felt white is the right color to go for here because it makes it shine more shiny and that's exactly what I wanted to achieve here in that case. So from that point on it's just rinse and repeat for all of the parts of the body doing highlights, doing the shadows try to give some dimension to the picture doing the helmet right here after that we just got the shoes left and the skateboard and we will do some slight modifications to the background to give it more of a comic book style If you have any questions about my style, or my artwork, or my brushes, just send me a message or a comment down below. So we are finished with the highlights and the shadows for our whole body and we just have to finish our board and we're going to put in the shadows and the cool thing is we're going to play a little bit with the opacity of the layer and that's a nice thing if you separate your shadows and your highlights you can just make your shadows see through so you see the, the design of the board here coming through the shadow which is a pretty nice effect that I, I think. And we're finished with our character. From now on we're just adding a few little changes to our background, like we're adding a blur effect and a filter from our filter gallery. The one that I'm using here is called Cutout Filter and it gives the background a really nice comic book effect. And then I'm just adding another layer to our floor shadow because I felt that the floor shadow that the filter generated for us is not dark enough or I just wanted a little bit darker so I just painted it in and I gave our character a name I simply called her skater girl and we are pretty much done with our picture here I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope I could teach you something new and please do me a favor leave a like leave a comment follow me on YouTube and I hope I will see you again when I post my next video.